Hi everyone, this is Anita Berry with Johnston and Stewart here with another update from the 2023 legislative session. This concluded the seventh week of the session. At this point, only a few committees in both chambers are still continuing to meet, um, moving bills through their final committee of reference and to the floor for final passage. The House and Senate have officially announced budget allocations and conferees with budget conference set to begin on Monday, April 24th. Um, passing a balanced budget is the only thing that the legislature is constitutionally required to do before they adjourn the session. While the chambers are closely aligned on both aspects of their proposed budgets, items like funding for Enterprise Florida and Visit Florida still need to be worked out. The Senate passed House Bill 3 on a party line vote this week, sending it to the governor. The bill has been a priority for Governor DeSantis and would preclude fund managers investing state and local government held money from being able to consider environmental, social governance or ESG factors when choosing investments. The bill also prohibits banks from using social credit scoring to determine whether or not to offer customers loans or other banking services. It is widely expected that the governor will sign House Bill 3 into law. The legislature also passed a proposed constitutional amendment that would make school board elections partisan races beginning in November 2026. Voters must approve the amendment by referendum with more than 60% in order for it to go into effect. As a proposed constitutional measure, it does not require approval by the governor, so you can expect to see that, that question appear on your ballot in 2024. Continuing in education, both chambers moved legislation through committee this week that will split local property tax money for school construction and maintenance costs between traditional public schools and charter schools. While the funding has typically been reserved for tra traditional public schools, the legislation would shift more than $270 million to charter schools, allowing the money to follow the student. Both the House and Senate continue to move legislation through committee this week regarding vacation rentals. This is a big area of interest for Amplify Clearwater and its members. The bills are aimed at giving local governments more control over vacation rentals that are booked through online platforms. It would allow cities and counties to require vacation rentals to register and pay fees, while also requiring platforms like Airbnb to collect and remit sales tax to the state. The bill continues to face opposition from the Florida League of Cities for not going far enough. Clearwater's ordinance would remain grandfathered in both the House and Senate version as long as it is not substantially amended or changed to be more restrictive. The House Commerce Committee moved House Bill 1317 this week, which will prevent local governments from blocking developers from quickly demolishing and rebuilding coastal structures in storm prone areas. This bill is aimed at ensuring that structures damaged by storms like major hurricanes such as Hurricane Ian can be rebuilt in a way that makes them insurable. The bill requires that older buildings to be deemed in unsafe or to be below base flood elevation in order for developers to rebuild without local government interference. Opponents are concerned that the bill could lead to unrestrained redevelopment and replacement of historic sites. Uh, the sponsor, Representative Spencer Roach, has noted his willingness to work with opposition to try to find some type of compromise. A similar bill in the Senate is ready for a vote on the floor. Despite heavy Democratic opposition, the House passed a bill this week that would allow landlords to give tenants the option of paying an ongoing non-refundable monthly fee on top of their rent. This would be instead of a large refundable security deposit. Supporters believe the bill will help struggling renters to find housing without having to come up with a high security deposit amount up front. The House bill will now go to the Senate where its companion measure is waiting for consideration on the floor. Finally, a little bit unexpected this week, House Bill 917, which creates a state minimum wage exemption for minor league baseball was amended in the Commerce Committee. The amendment broadens the scope of the legislation and prevents local governments from mandating minimum wage for their private government contractors. The bill was temporarily postponed by the committee following the amendment, though it's expected to be brought back up in Commerce Committee on Monday. That's all from the seventh week of the legislative session. We have two weeks left and we're gonna to continue to keep you updated on all the twists and turns as we get to the finish line.